She couldn't stand her own son's cry anymore. She puts him inside the oven and turned it on at 200 degrees to get rid of the baby. But she could never imagine what would happen next and how fate would make her pay for her perversity. But the question remains, did the baby survive his mother's atrocity? Downtown, in the gleaming shadows of the most imposing buildings, stood a dark female figure, Margot. Dressed in a dazzling outfit that hid her bitterness, the woman walked with no direction, with an angry expression filled with hatred. Beneath the luxurious fabric of her clothing, a fake belly stood out, a constant reminder of the motherhood she wanted so desperately, just to keep her husband. She ran her hands over the belly, and her heart raged at the thought of the possibility of never having her own child. After all, the child would be her salvation. Her husband, Alejandro, was very excited about her pregnancy, but he could never imagine that his wife was lying to him. She had tried everything, doctors, medicine, alternative treatments, always in secret, of course, but nothing worked. As she wandered through the streets with her mind clouded by her dark thoughts, something in the distance caught her eye. Margot stopped and looked at a young girl who was sitting on the curb, a homeless woman. But she had one thing the rich woman didn't. She was pregnant. The homeless woman, dressed in worn and very dirty clothes, had an air of despair. Yet still, there was an undeniable glint in her eyes, the glint of a mother-to-be. At that moment, a hideous idea popped into Margot's mind. She looked at the girl and saw a solution to her problem, and an evil plan began to form in her mind. Hello, dear, said the millionaire, slowly approaching, sketching a smile that did not reach her eyes. Are you okay? I see that you're pregnant. Yes, I am. Why do you ask? The girl replied, her distrust reflected in her tone. The streets had taught her to be skeptical, especially when someone very well-dressed approached her. Margot let out a forced laugh and took a step forward. Well, you know, my husband and I have been trying to have a baby for years, only to no avail. So as soon as I saw you, I thought, maybe you can help us. The girl asked how, but her expression was one of pure caution. Well, it may sound strange, but I can offer a good amount of money for your baby, said the woman. The homeless woman got up and backed away, horrified. Are you crazy? This is my child. I would never sell my child. Margot's fake smile disappeared, giving way to her true colors. Seriously, girl, she said, trying to keep her composure, even though she was already getting irritated. It's not like you can offer him a decent life. Think about his future. I'm filthy rich. I can give your baby a life you could never dream of. What are you going to do for him, huh? Teach him how to look for food in the trash? My child will be loved, and that's more than your money can buy. Now get out of my way. The young woman was furious and walked away, leaving the horrible woman behind. Margot watched her walk away, and a wave of anger and hatred washed over her. That wench! I will have that baby whatever the cost. That brat will be mine. She swore to herself as she watched the homeless girl disappear from view. She was determined to get what she wanted, no matter the cost. Her crazy mind was already devising a new evil plan to get what she wanted. The rich woman returned home, and there was her husband, waiting for her. The cruel truth was that Margot, despite being a woman whose beauty could arouse envy in many, was not nearly as pretty on the inside as she appeared. Raised in a family that had some resources, she was spoiled by her parents who provided her with everything things a girl her age could dream of. She was their little princess, the center of their universe, which made her a spoiled and ruthlessly selfish woman over the years. However, her father was involved in many fraudulent situations, and that was how he made his small fortune. But when she was 18, the family fortune collapsed like a house of cards, when every crime was revealed. Stripped of her luxuries and privileges, Margot found herself facing an abyss. But instead of being humbled by the situation, she turned into an obstinate hunter, willing to do whatever it takes to go back to the luxurious life she once knew. Fate smiled at the woman during an art auction, when her green eyes met those of Alejandro, a successful businessman. He was the owner of a market-leading company of cleaning products, accumulating wealth beyond imagination. The contrast between Alejandro and Margot was palpable. He was known for his kindness, 
a true gentleman who treated everyone with respect, regardless of their social class, a behavior that the gold digger saw as weakness. How can anyone be so naive? Margot thought, as she watched the man treating his servants with dignity. They are just filthy servants. They're poor. Even so, using her charms and sharp wit, she managed to get close to Alejandro, luring him into her web of lies. She acted like a good girl, humble and with a huge heart. He, on the other hand, was captured by her indisputable physical beauty and apparent sweetness. However, over time, Margot's mask began to crack, revealing the selfish, manipulative, and completely unscrupulous woman underneath it. Alejandro thought about her a lot and understood that he was tired of his girlfriend's arrogant and presumptuous way. She is not the woman I dreamed of starting a family with. She treated her employees badly, kept asking for more and more money, more limits on her credit cards, and didn't even have the respect to present him as her companion at her parties. She just wanted to enjoy the life of an heiress, which she thought she was entitled to have. And when the millionaire was about to end it all, when he finally decided to end the relationship, Margot played the card that would guarantee her place in Alejandro's luxurious life. With tears in her eyes and a mischievous smile hidden behind a veil of sadness, she blurted out, I'm pregnant. That simple sentence set the businessman's heart on fire. He, who always dreamed of having a family, and since he was already 35 years old, decided to give her a second chance. So he married the scoundrel. However, behind the facade of a potential mother, Margot hid a terrible truth. The pregnancy was a lie, a scam to trap Alejandro. And despite numerous attempts, the scammer was unable to get pregnant. The impossibility of having children scared her, igniting a fear of losing her fortune. She didn't care about the possibility of losing her husband. She was afraid of losing her money. To maintain the luxury and perks, the desperate Margot resorted to the unimaginable. She decided to continue the scam, using a fake belly to support the pregnancy lie. But the gold digger was running out of time and needed to think about something quick as the months were passing by and the day of the fake birth would arrive. So, after she met that homeless woman, a skinny woman with deep green eyes, just like Alejandro's, and dark wavy hair like his, a flame of hope ignited in her perverse mind. However, with the woman's vehement refusal to sell the child, the rich woman would have to think of something fast, especially because Alejandro was increasingly excited about the arrival of his first child. He always wanted to feel the warmth of his wife's belly, but Margot always came up with an excuse to avoid his touch. And so, the millionaire was getting a little uncomfortable and suspicious. It's a common discomfort of pregnancy, love, she said with a forced smile. The doctor advised me to avoid touching my belly too much. The gold digger could feel time slipping through her fingers. When the pressure became unbearable, Margot made a macabre decision, sinking even deeper into her pit of despair. He resorted to the help of two criminals, paying them with the luxurious jewels that the businessman had given her and ordered. I want you to bring me the filthy woman's baby when it is born, and get rid of her. Nobody will miss that piece of garbage anyway. Terror descended like a storm. The homeless woman who had already been followed for months by the viper's henchmen was kidnapped, taken from her shelter at night with brutal violence. Her cry of anguish echoed in the stillness of the night, but it was ignored by the sleeping city. She was taken to an uninhabitable and inhumane place, where she gave birth in fear and pain. The baby's cry echoed through the confined space, before being muffled out by the merciless bandits. They took the little one from the mother's arms, who only had time to see his face before being separated from him. No! Give me back my son! No! The poor girl screamed until her voice disappeared. After that horrendous crime, the young woman, weak from childbirth, was dumped under a dark bridge, abandoned as if she were nothing. The cold reality was that the scammer got what she wanted. As she couldn't just show up with a child in her arms, she told her husband that she wanted to give birth alone, just her and the midwife, in their country house, which was far away, claiming that it would be healthier for the child to be born in the midst of nature. So after receiving the baby from the henchman, 
The Cretan returned to her mansion with the stolen child in her arms. Oh, my son, how beautiful he is, love. Alejandro celebrated with emotion when seeing the face of his supposed little baby and was filled with joy, promising him a future full of riches and, of course, unconditional love for his wife. The perverse one, in turn, smiled with satisfaction. I did it! I did it! She was relieved, for now she would have the life of luxury guaranteed forever. Meanwhile, the homeless woman, whose name was Gabrielle, was devastated, poor thing. Even so, even with almost no strength to stand up, she went to a police station to report the crime. However, instead of compassion and help, she was met with indifference and contempt. The authorities treated her condescendingly, suggesting that she was just an addict, that she had never had a child, or worse, that she had traded her baby for drugs. Get out of here, beggar. Go buy your drugs over there. We have better things to do than waste time with rags like you. The police's refusal to help her placed a huge weight on her shoulders. However, amid the overwhelming sadness, a thread of determination ignited in her heart. Gabrielle promised herself that she would find her baby, no matter what the cost. The young woman had a history as complex as her current situation, poor thing. Although she was young, beautiful, and smart, life had never good to her. The girl was the daughter of homeless people who, unfortunately, died in the same circumstances in which they lived. She grew up on the streets, amid poverty and the indifference of society. Although she fought with all her strength to get out of that situation, prejudice and constant judgment formed an unbreakable barrier, preventing her from achieving anything in life. Her pregnancy was not planned. The baby's father, a random traveler who told the poor thing that he owned several properties and that he was going to get her out of that situation, deceived her, promising love and protection only to disappear later. Yet, despite all the hardships, Gabrielle loved her child with all her heart. She dreamed of a better life for her son, a life she never had. She would do everything so that her little one wouldn't grow homeless. But now, that dream had been ripped from her arms. I will find you, my love, she murmured to herself, looking at the night sky. No matter what it takes, I promise. And with that promise, the girl armed herself with courage and determination to face what would come ahead. So, months passed in the majestic mansion, and the witch, already settled into her role as a mother, enjoying the abundance and wealth around her. However, soon things started to get complicated for her. That's because, on a quiet night, the couple were discussing the raising of the boy. And Alejandro, with a sincere smile on his face, commented, Love, I think that in these first few months we should be the only ones taking care of our big boy. I don't want a nanny here. We need to build a strong bond with our son. The man then promised that he would work during the day and spend the nights taking care of his son and take turns with his wife, who was always tired. Margot, however, had to spend her days with the baby, a task that was consuming her. She hated the child with everything in her body. She pinched him when he cried, whispered words of contempt and shouted at the little one who was completely helpless. Why won't you stop crying, you brat? You little monster! You're just like that filthy mother of yours! The witch snorted as she rocked the baby in her arms. As the days passed, the anger inside her grew, as did her resentment for the little one. How am I supposed to enjoy my life with this thing around? She thought. Am I going to lose my youth because of this disgrace of a child that is not even mine? It was then that a perverse and cruel idea arose in her mind. She would kill the baby. Her plan was to put him in the oven, turn on the gas, and let him die of intoxication. In her devilishly twisted mind, she could already see the scene playing out. The small, lifeless body. She would be crying disconsolately while Alejandro, heartbroken, tried to comfort her. She would maintain the facade of the desolate mother, but afterwards she would continue to enjoy the luxurious life she had with her husband. That simple glimpse of that cruel thought brought him a sinister smile. After all, what was a tiny tiny tragedy compared to the pleasure of an unrestricted life? Determined to realize her monstrous plan, Margot grabbed the crying baby and headed for the kitchen. Shut up! She screamed, but the small creature in her arms seemed unaware of the imminent danger he was about to face. Facing the great oven, 
evil flickered in her eyes like the flame of a wildfire. She muttered one last cruel thing to the helpless little baby. You should never have been born, you filthy. Then the witch opened the oven door and placed her supposed son inside it. The cry of the little boy echoed in the cold metal and filled the kitchen with a grotesque symphony. Then, the Cretan turned the oven up to 200 degrees, letting the gas fill the space. She closed the oven door, leaving the baby trapped in the darkness, and a satisfied smile crept across her face as she contemplated her handiwork. Just one more step until my victory, she thought. However, at that very moment, that abominable woman was interrupted by a shove that threw her on the cold marble floor of the kitchen. Startled and utterly confused, she looked up to see what had happened, and then... There she was. Gabrielle, the homeless woman standing right in the doorway. The girl, her eyes wide with terror, screamed and quickly opened the oven door, pulling her son out, holding him tightly in her arms. For a moment, silence reigned in the kitchen, and only the little baby's cry echoed as the two women faced each other, trapped in a terrible impasse. You're crazy, witch, you demon! You are going to kill my son! The young woman screamed, her eyes flooded with tears, not believing that if she hadn't arrived just in time, her baby would have died in a brutal way. It turns out that the homeless woman had kept in her memory the face of the rich woman who tried to buy her son. The memory of that arrogant and inhuman face made her suspect that maybe that woman had something to do with the disappearance of her baby. So... She started roaming the richest neighborhoods, always looking for that face. After a few months, someone caught her eye. It was her, the disgraceful woman and her child in the stroller crying. The woman had an expression of hatred on her face. Gabrielle felt a knot in her stomach. That baby was her child, she was sure of it. But how to rescue her little one without attracting attention? So she decided just to watch. She soon realized that the rich woman was alone during the day, and that was when she would get her son back. However, she could never imagine that, by jumping over the wall and carefully invading the house, the viper would be trying to kill her son. You are a sick woman! Gabriele shouted, leaving her son aside and going after Margot. The two began to fight. However, the husband arrived just in time for lunch. What's going on here?! He yelled when he found his wife on the floor, all hurt, and the girl on top of her, furious. She's attacking me, love. She wants to take our child. The scoundrel shouted, trying to play the victim. Alejandro tried to defend her, but the young girl interrupted him. Look, man, your wife stole my son. Are you crazy, girl? I'm going to call the police if you don't get out of here now. I can prove it. And that's when that poor father's world came crashing down. As soon as Gabrielle lifted the shirt and showed a mark on her stomach that resembled a triangle, the man swallowed hard. His son had the same mark. I, I, but how? And that's when the young woman told everything, exactly everything that had happened since Margot approached her trying to buy her baby. The gold digger even tried to lie and ran, wanting to escape. But the businessman, possessed with rage, immobilized her and called the police. You're going to rot in jail for what you did, Margot, he said, shaking with rage, and she was arrested. Now, Gabrielle, with her son back, ended up receiving an unexpected offer. Alejandro, moved by the strength of that woman, gave her a house and a job in his company. Since he had become fond of the baby as if it were his own, he didn't want to stop giving him all needed assistance. He visited the little one every day, and, little by little, he became enchanted with the young woman. Sometime later, they fell in love and built a real family and showed that it was possible to overcome all those past hardships. If you liked the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss and see you in the next story.